know what I do try to do when I build a figure is I try to give it an internal life, an inner life. I do want to give it some inner sense. I don't want it just to be a surface thing. And I don't know if I achieved that or not, but that really has always been a motivating factor for me. I am a potter. I'm a potter even though I make figures. The figures are hollow, they're coiled, so they're made like pots. So the tradition of pottery is evident in my work. It's my technique and I love it for that reason. In the past, I've always gone from one exhibition to another. But more recently, I've decided not to give myself the deadline and the uh, pressure of having to meet those requirements. At the moment, for the first time, I'm just working without any of that. There's really more exploration happening than was happening previously. I've decided that I'll make some pots, so I'll go back to making domestic ware. And the whole thought of having a production line and, um, and developing glazes and doing the sorts of things I did when I first began to make pots is quite exciting. This is the second firing in this kiln. This is my tableware. The glaze is working. I'll still continue to experiment with it. This is really interesting for me because this is like a full circle because this is where I began working with clay, making bowls and trying to, well, trying to make bowls. <clears throat> and um, yeah, and trying to get a celadon. So it's... Uh, it's fun to return to the thing that first inspired me. My aesthetic is um, quite minimal in a way, and even the bowls that you saw that came out of the kiln are very similar to the bowls that I was making by the time I left art school. My work is very, very slow to start with, and it's time consuming. So if I'm under pressure, I often feel that I can't explore it in the way that I'd like to. I've really been revisiting small sculpture, which I haven't made for a few years. This is just a bit of an experiment, and it's the beginning of a little series. I'm going to do a little series on Adam and Eve. Yeah, and see where it goes. <laughs> One never knows where it'll go. <laughs> Initially, I was very interested in that thing that came from the Buddhist sculpture, the Chinese and the Japanese Buddhist sculpture, because, you know, that had a kind of stillness. And I really loved that stillness. One of the things that interested me a lot initially was the balance and getting that piece up on its feet and balanced. I got interested in motion because I went to teach in a junior school. That got me involved with the way children move and the way children think about moving. Then I'd watch them do somersaults, cartwheels, stand on their hands. And that theme has remained in my work. Obviously it touched something for me and it continues and I'm still fascinated by it. The dress has evolved as a possibility of making something for the wall and not making the whole figures. I just thought that that was some way of expressing something about being female. It's a memory of sunray skirts. I remember my mother having skirts that had those knife pleats. 
Also, I got very involved in the technical aspect of making that because I loved the way it had to be so precise, yet I still wanted it to have a softness about it. The dresses at the moment with the botanical aspect, that comes from something that's been a passion of mine from as long as I can remember, looking at plants particularly. I began with the lotus dresses because the lotus has always been a symbol that I've used right from the very beginning of my work. I used to paint them on my pots. I used to inlay them when I did inlaid work. I used the leaves for the skirt. And also I've worked on the surface so that it's got a kind of texture to it. And then I resolved the top of it with the lotus pods. So I started off with that and then other images came into my head. One in particular, because I've got this little lime tree and I used to watch the two limes very often grow together and they're very much like little breasts. And so I went, okay, well that resolves the top of the dress. And now I'm going to use the images from the lime tree to decorate. Now, I like the idea that it's a bit like a drawing, that even the sculpting or the Bass relief, as it called, is called, has a drawing aspect to it. My next um, development on this piece of work is going to be to use some of this work, some of the drawings I've made on here. So I'm just going to try to decide which bit may work on here. So I'm looking really at this and thinking that here I can bring this bit here. This line will actually be indented with this tool so that it will show up as a line. So it'll have two layers. It'll have the layer that's raised and it'll have the layer that's in size. Because often when you look at the plant, you see those layers. The technical challenges and the conceptual come together in a kind of equal marriage in my work. I want to make beautiful work. I want to make work that's inspiring. There's enough ugliness in the world. I don't really want to reflect on that in my work. I want to reflect on something that takes you beyond that. And that's very much what I've done with the Virgin Saints. And um, I've made them quite beautiful, even though they might have breasts removed and gold breasts instead, or, you know, they're wearing um, coral beads to indicate that their throat was cut. You know, they were young women who were violated and chose to become Christian in order to escape. A lot of my work is about being female. My personal practice is central to my life. Something that's in my mind most of the time. I rarely think about much else except where the work's going and what I'm thinking about and where I can take it next. I'm so committed to clay. Clay is such a difficult material and it's so hard to predict altogether and I think that's the reason that it's so challenging. I always have to engage with something that will be another challenge and will push me to think differently. I'll do ceramics forever.